Hello, my name is Lindsay Stewart, and I am the Assistant Director of Academic Programming at Japan House. And today, we'll be sharing Karuta. Karuta refers to many different kinds of card games in Japan, and the one that we're going to be talking about today is called Ogura Hyakuni Ishu Uta Karuta. Uta Karuta refers to poem cards, uh, playing cards played with poems, and Ogura Hyakuni Ishu Uta Karuta is based on the poetic collection called, in English, 100 Poems by 100 Poets. It was compiled by Fujiwara no Teika in the 13th century, and it's a very beloved collection, very popular. It has lasted through the centuries, and it deals with topics such as love, loneliness, the seasons, and more. So the card game, Karuta, uses those poems on the cards. Uta Karuta is typically played at the New Year, both just casually in people's homes, and professionally uh, at competitions, which are held at Omi Shrine, a bit outside of Tokyo in Japan. And since about the 1950s or so, those competitions have been held at the New Year to determine the Queen, uh, which is the women's division champion, and the Meijin, which is the men's division champion. You may have heard of Karuta through the very popular manga and anime Chihaya Furu. Uh, I also like Chihaya Furu quite a bit, and it helped me understand Karuta a bit better. So if you read that manga, then you'll definitely understand a few extra things uh, when we play Karuta today. To get started, let me explain what the game looks like. A Karuta set comes with two sets of cards, the Yomifuda, or reading cards, and the Torifuda, or playing cards. The Yomifuda has the whole poem, while the Torifuda has only the second verse of the poem on it. The reciter uses the Yomifuda to select the poems to be recited in random order, and the players play using the Torifuda. So I'm going to introduce you to a few of the basic rules of Karuta. First things first, after greeting each other, you will take the deck of 100 Torifuda playing cards and you will mix them up. And then each player will take 25 cards. Okay, 25, 25. The remaining cards are gathered up and put away. These are called karafuda, or empty cards. The reader, the yomite, will recite them during the game at random, but because they're not on the playing field, you can't take them. And I'll talk about otetsuki, which are fowls related to karafuda later. So, then you take your cards and you place them on the playing field.
Okay. Once you have your cards lined up in your preferred order and out on the playing field, then you have 15 minutes to memorize the placement of all of the cards on both sides. In the last two minutes of your 15 minute memorization period, you get to do practice swings, uh, especially targeting your opponent's side, but you can't touch any cards. The object of the game, the way that you win, is by clearing your own field, your GG. And there are a couple ways to do this. One is, of course, by taking cards from your own field. You do not replace them. Or, if you take a card from your opponent's field, you send them a card from your field that they have to then incorporate into their field. There are a couple of things to be careful of called otetsuki, which are fouls. One way to get a foul is if the yomite reads a karafuda, which is one of these cards, not on the playing field, and you touch a card. I touched it. It wasn't actually the right card. When that happens, the opponent gets to send you a card. Another way to get a otetsuki is if you touch the wrong card, um, and it's a card that's on the field, if that wrong card is in also the wrong territory. So, for example, you have this card. If it was red and you touched a card over here by accident and the correct card is over here, they get to send you a card. You can also get double fouls. So, if the card that was red doesn't exist, in the playing field, just is a karafuda, and you touch two cards, oh, they get to send you two cards. So, empty card, and you touch both sides, you get two cards. So the object is to clear your field, and when you have only one card left, if you hit theirs, then you send it to them, and you win. So we're only playing with 20 cards and 10 karafuda. So, as usual, the first step is to greet each other. And mix them up. Mo 
we'll each take 10. And then set them up. Okay. And then if you want to do practice swings, now we can do practice swings. So we So when two people hit it at once and you don't know who got it first, you can fight over it and just talk about it. Uh, or generally, if it's on this person's side, this person will get it if it's a true tie. There's judges, but... If you want to get into karata, there are a couple different techniques that you can use for memorization. And it really depends on your style and interests. If you're very interested in poetry, I recommend delving into the poems, reading more about them, reading their translations. To memorize, you can start this step even before you know hiragana, although you will have to learn hiragana at some point. There's a couple of really excellent books about the poems, one that I recommend is Joshua Mastow's Pictures of the Heart, the Hyakuni Issue in Word and Image, which the, uh, the 2015 version is a little bit better than the older one. And this is a really in-depth dive into the history of the poems, how they've been used um, in image, 
And also it has some excellent translations. A second book that I recommend for a little bit more simple, affordable uh, approach to these poems is Miashta and Welch's 100 Poets, Passions of the Imperial Court, which was published in 2008. And you should read through the poems, get familiar with their meanings, and then you can take the next step, which if you haven't learned hiragana, the next step would be to learn hiragana. If you already know hiragana, you can skip this step for now, although you should get familiar with the poems, um, and just go straight into memorization. It's a little bit hard to teach you the way I learned when I was in Japan, but luckily there are some really excellent apps available now for free. I use Wasuramochi, which not only has the poem, but it also has an English translation available in the option, and you can get all of this info on the author and the history of it, as well as the kimariji, and you can use it to practice and indicate when you've memorized it. You can also use the web app Karuta SRS, which is a really good memorization tool designed for earlier learners in mind and you can just sign up for free. You do have to sign up, but it's a free sign up and then you can use uh, the whole website for memorization practice. I hope you had fun today with Japan House Shares Karuta and if you do manage to learn all of these uh, and memorize the cards, please come and email me and we'll play a game. If you have a local Karuta club, that's great. There's not very many in the United States, so if you have one, join. We always need more players. And you can always look online for more information, so you can really dig into it. You could also read Chihayafuru or watch Chihayafuru the anime to get kind of a more playful, joyful look at what playing karuta in a club is like. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope to play with you soon. Japan House would like to thank everyone for following along during the past year with our new program, Japan House Shares. We will be taking a break in July and back in August on the 22nd for our fall series, Japan House Shares, The Path of Hulu and Zen.